From Navy SEAL to CIA operative, to member of the top secret third echelon splinter cell program, and eventually the commander of the fourth echelon, Sam Fisher's career has spanned decades and has been located across the globe. Though he has attempted to retire a number of times, his spec ops life has essentially become a part of his DNA. He has well and truly become what he does. Having already taken part of the Ghost Recon universe in both Wildlands and Breakpoint, it has now been announced that he'll be joining Team Rainbow. Though there seems to be something else that is motivating this move. Highly secretive and vastly experienced, who is Sam Fisher and what is he planning? What happens next is up to you. Born in 1957 in Towson, Maryland, Sam's father was a 25-year veteran case officer for the Central Intelligence Agency who worked undercover in Moscow during the Cold War. Little is known about his childhood, but after his parents died, he attended a military boarding school. Later, he was accepted into the United States Naval Academy, where he graduated in 1980 with a bachelor's degree in political science and was commissioned as an officer in the US Navy. Not long after, his file was flagged for recruitment by the Navy SEALs, of which he joined after passing the grueling selection process and training program. During the mid-80s, Sam worked for the CIA, under the cover of being deployed as a diplomatic aide in Eastern Europe. During this time, he met an NSA cryptanalyst named Regan Burns in the then Soviet Socialist Republic of Georgia. After a short time together, Regan fell pregnant and following a small wedding ceremony, they had a baby girl named Sarah, born on the 31st of May, 1985. Although they loved each other, they had a difficult marriage. Their professions kept them at a distance, and eventually, after three years of marriage, they divorced. Regan went back to the United States and took Sarah with her, reclaiming her maiden name and changing Sarah's. Sam created distance between himself and them. He placed focus on his job, while he was operating in Afghanistan, East Germany, and the Soviet satellite states, in the years leading up to the collapse of the USSR. Later on, Regan got sick, and eventually died of ovarian cancer. Sarah was 15. After gaining guardianship of Sarah, Sam moved back to the US and took a desk job with the CIA, where he worked on weapons development, as well as studying experimental weaponry and information warfare. This enabled him to spend more quality time with his daughter. As a result, they became closer, and he was able to finally fulfill his role of her father and make a positive contribution to her upbringing. During his time as a Navy SEAL, Sam participated in a number of special operations in Bolivia, Senegal, Colombia, Kosovo, and the Persian Gulf. He also led a number of operations around the world in various conflict zones. Amid his naval career, Sam also spent nearly three years working as an intelligence analyst, and over time he was awarded the Defense Distinguished Service Medal, and around 1996 was honorably discharged from the Navy. A recently retired Sam Fisher underwent training at the farm in Camp Perry, Virginia. This training was to demonstrate to the director of the third echelon, Colonel Lambert, that he had the appropriate skills to successfully perform in the field as a member of the newly created Splinter Cell program for the NSA's third echelon initiative. Over a period of time, communications had become more sophisticated and digital encryption more expansive. Passive collection had simply been rendered inefficient. So the third echelon, a top secret organization, was tasked with leading the American Information Warfare Initiative. The primary goal of the organization was to serve as the equivalent of the special forces in the modern age of technology and information warfare by physically obtaining intelligence in locations where all other means had been exhausted. Its most significant initiative was the Splinter Cell program in which lone operatives called Splinter Cells did field work in sensitive areas around the world. Like a slither of glass, these units operated seamlessly undetected by electronic and human enemies alike, and were able to infiltrate highly sensitive locations and collect intelligence by any means necessary. 
Unlike the CIA's field operatives, their identities were kept secret, even from other government agencies. The testing requirements for this division included interrogation, bypassing surveillance systems, lockpicking, obstacle navigation, stealth, and extreme lethal and non-lethal force. Surprised by his skill, the director personally welcomed Sam into the NSA, third echelon. Over the years, he participated in a number of operations, including the rescue of a CIA agent, the capture of a former CIA militia leader, and the investigation of a mole working within the NSA. In late 2007, while on a deep undercover mission in Iceland, he was pulled out, and Lambert broke the news to him that his daughter, Sarah, was allegedly killed by a drunk driver. Unable to cope with the loss of his daughter, Sam is relieved from his duty as a splinter cell. Eventually, after some time had passed, Lambert reassigned him to a high-risk, deep cover operation to infiltrate the ranks of John Brown's army, a domestic terrorist organization. He went undercover as a convicted felon and prison inmate, and after proving himself, was introduced to the organization and offered membership. He accepted, becoming a double agent within the JBA. In 2011, three years after the death of his daughter, and no longer active within the third echelon, he heard a rumor that Sarah's death was no accident, and went to Malta to investigate. After being captured by the third echelon in Malta, it was revealed that Sarah was alive. But, if he wanted to see his daughter again, he had to help investigate a mole that was working from the inside of the organization. At third echelon HQ, a recording was played to him, which explained that Sarah's death was faked to prevent her from being used as leverage by the mole to compromise Sam and the agency. After hearing this, Sam agreed to help stop the mole and assist in preventing the assassination of the President of the United States. Eventually he was reunited with his daughter and once again retired from government work. However, unsurprisingly bored with civilian life, Sam accepted a job from an old associate and good friend, Victor Cost, at Paladin 9 Security, which specialised in high-tech defence solutions and hostage recovery. But when Cost was injured during an attack at Anderson Air Base in Guam, not long after, Sam was offered the position of commander of the 4th Echelon by the President. At some point during 2019, Sam was deployed in Bolivia in order to recover sensitive intelligence data from a rogue CIA officer. Knowing full well the mission is going to be incredibly difficult, he contacts CIA case officer Karen Berman in order to borrow a Ghost Recon fire team. Sam's deployment takes him to a Unidad base in La Cruz, where he infiltrates the base ahead of the ghosts and assassinates the rogue agent prior to their arrival. Upon greeting Nomad, Sam hacks into the Unidad servers in order to erase all traces of the sensitive information, while Nomad's team provides tactical support and security. While leaving the base, Sam discloses the nature of the intelligence to Nomad, revealing it to contain sensitive, high-technology research and development that could change the nature of warfare and put the special operations community out of business. In 2025, Sam is assigned by the US government to hunt down a high-value target called the Strategist, who had been kidnapping military specialists all over the globe. Given the fact that Aroa can't be entered, Sam calls in the help of Victor Cost. In Aroa, he meets up with Nomad, and they team up to rescue Nomad's teammate, Midas, and also take down Project Claw, a new form of drone swarm technology that has been made by Skeltech, forcefully by Sentinel CEO, Trey Stone. They successfully manage to capture the strategist, and Sam assures Nomad, before leaving with the HVT, that he will present the HVT to the right people so they can deploy the military cavalry into Aroa. Sam and Cost leave the island in the Paladin before the drone control program gets reactivated. Sam Fisher would later be recruited by Team Rainbow to be the first member of Rainbow Operational Staff. The evaluation carried out on Sam highlights how very little information is available in regards to his past missions, as the nature of his position has always had him operate on a need-to-know basis. Essentially, his role involved managing incredibly sensitive situations, 
and effectively cleaning up any loose ends while remaining undetected. He has a strong sense of moral justice, and he believes in never leaving a man behind. Specialist Finca remembers encountering him as a child, as he was an acquaintance of her father. She recalls the impression that he left on her, a person who truly sees others for who they are, and not what you might expect them to be. He also proved to have an excellent measure of how to approach an individual in order to either work with them or overthrow them. Despite his age, along with the length of time he has technically been off duty, Sam is kept in good shape. However, there does seem to be an ulterior motive to him joining the team, something he is unwilling to share. Though this should come as no surprise, after all, Sam has always been tight-lipped, as the nature of his previous assignments has never required him to disclose information to outsiders. But regardless of the singularity, the team are willing to take full advantage of his vast experience while he's here. Sam Fisher has been involved in numerous armed conflicts around the globe for nearly two decades, and a lot of them have been highly unorthodox. His extensive service career boasts a number of geological hotspots, including Iran, the Persian Gulf, Colombia, and Afghanistan. During the course of his career, he also undertook various covert assignments, including Russia, Panama, North and South Korea, and the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. It's clear that the constant training, regular combat, and undercover operations have defined his adult life. And not only has he survived, but he has thrived in this type of environment. His insatiable curiosity, tactical experience, and brisk honesty has made him a seemingly unstoppable force, and he has well and truly become identifiable by his accomplishments. However, in order to achieve this title, he has had to make a number of personal sacrifices and bury deep certain aspects of his personality. Over time, he has adapted to this role, and more importantly, learned to sharpen his ability to detach himself emotionally from a situation to get the job done. His perspective and observant nature, paired with his often distinctly dark sense of humour, enables him to master his fears and keep him focused while in the field. Honest and abrasive, he has very little time for dishonesty and prefers to cut through the general social dribble and get on with the job at hand. Over time he has obtained a number of combat experiences, many scars and a place in military history, and while there is little left to be proved to the world, he has no interest in glory. If he fights, it's because he believes he is capable of provoking positive change. Sam Fisher and Splinter Cell spans decades in the gaming industry and this has really only been a small summary of what's happened in Sam's career. But with the recent addition to other Tom Clancy titles like Wildlands, Breakpoint, and soon Rainbow Six Siege, one could be forgiven for assuming that we may soon be seeing a little more of him in an upcoming release. I hope you found this interesting. I'm very much looking forward to talking more about Sam Fisher if what I think is going to happen comes to fruition. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers! Cheers!